And can you hear me and see me? Yes, I'm going to turn up my volume just a little bit. We're on record. So we I think we are like ready to go. Let me check one more thing on my lighting isn't great. Hang on. There we go, my window was open from working this afternoon. Now the sun is still coming through. All right, we're going to get started today. And we're going to talk about short-term rentals. And today, I just wanna welcome you to Leanne Riley's Real Estate Investing Made Simple Club. And I do live interviews with experts and leaders in real estate investing nationally. I'm Leanne Riley. I'm a broker and a real estate coach. And I lead the Encore Investment Team of Realtors in the Twin Cities here in Minnesota. I built a multi-million dollar portfolio of residential, multifamily, condo development, commercial, and vacation properties, which is what we're talking about today. And as a national coach and trainer, I help ambitious people build wealth as real estate investors with my proven profit formula coaching program. And I provide education just like today with the club and on my YouTube channel, if you ever want to look, it's Leanne Riley Real Estate. And be sure and subscribe if you go over there. So today's topic, short-term rentals, and you might know it as Airbnb, or I always said VRBO, but I heard a TV commercial and they called it Burbo, and I'm like, what? So I bet other people too. So my guest today is Jesse Mills, and Jesse, where are we? Where are you today? Uh, I'm coming to you from the Westin Kirlin Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. There you go. He's yeah. traveling. I hope we get him back. I'm going to share the results right here. I can't hear you, Jesse. What? Okay, so here's what we have. It looks like the majority is buying holders. We've okay. got some get started people oh, oh we lost jesse so i'm gonna keep talking house hacking there's some burr we have a lot of different people but buy and hold is big so i'm gonna stop sharing jesse will be back in a second and there he is we're, we're gonna have a tough time i bet okay I'm ready to ask him some questions and just another logistic for everybody the chat box is activated and I see someone here is using the Q&A. That works too. Okay. Let's see. We got a guy over there. At, he wants, needs more choices. The Q&A guy. I know I need short-term rentals in there, don't I? So I answered that one. All right. So I'll be looking over there in the chat box or the Q&A and hopefully Jesse will be right. So now I guess I get to talk to you guys about short-term rentals till we get him back. So somebody else can answer this, but I'm going to say why short-term rentals over other strategies? And one of the things about short-term rentals that I know everyone likes to share is that, guess what? You can go on vacation and you can go there. Great. We got him back. Okay. The question was, why short-term rentals over other strategies, Jesse? So two things. Okay. So the cash flow is definitely better than a long-term buy and hold is what I have found. I have long-term buy and holds. I have uh, lease options. I have contract for deed. That's kind of my background. I spent 15 years as a mortgage broker and loan officer, got into the creative real estate world, started doing a lot of lease options, wholesale lease options, assignments, sandwiches. And so I do a lot of that, but I love to travel. Hence, I'm here at a beautiful hotel with semi-good Wi-Fi, but I love to travel and I like to go places. And 
I really decided that I want to make my business a lifestyle business, right? And so lifestyle business means you have cash flow, means you have um, you know, the ability to work from anywhere pretty much, right? And uh, so for me, I, my first place I got was an area I love to go ski at. So it's an area I used to like to ski at, go hiking, mountain biking. And I thought, how cool would it be if I had a house here that paid for itself? Honestly, that's my first goal. I just want a place that I love to travel to, love to go to, that would pay for itself. And started digging into it more and said, hey, you know what? Um, I have really two choices. I can have the resort at this place manage it, um, which is no headaches, right? And some people choose to do that. I don't think well, most people here, um, you know, now or watching this later, fall in that camp, right? We, we're cool with a little bit of headaches. We're cool with, with management systems, right? But they offered 50% um, fee to manage it for no headaches, um, or I could do it myself. And I realized, wow, if I do this myself, this makes good money. And so for me, I look at everything going, do I want this as an investment property that's going to be a good cash cow generator, um, that's going to have someone else paying my vacation property out for me? Um, or do I look to say, hey, you know what, this isn't as good of a deal as another area, another location, another type of property, but is it still getting paid for? Right. And on, on, on your taxes and depreciation and write offs and travel and using it, am I using it for free? Because in my book, so I'm kind of on a scale style play where you want this to be paid for and covered, or are you looking at a true investor where you know you could care less if you're there for two days out of the year um, or, or what, right? Especially when you get multiple units. So, for example, I've got um, a handful of properties in one location. So I'm using the same cleaning team. I'm using the same maintenance people, right? I'm using all the same resources, and that's how you can scale. So um, for me, those make sense. Those make money. Hence, I have you know five in one area. Uh, now the other areas where if they don't make as much money, then it's an area that hey, I just want to go vacation with my family and my friends, and I want to be able to go to, and it's always basically free and still making money. Okay, so basically then you're not managing these properties other than the ones that are close enough like Lutzen, but not the Florida or Arizona or farther ones. Oh. Okay, we're, our hotel Wi-Fi is not going to cut oh it God. for us. What? <laughs> okay, we got I you. Was, I, I was grumbling. Um, so for a couple of them, I'm using a service like Evolve um, and who does management where they'll do a lot of the bookings, okay? So they'll do a lot of the bookings, they'll get the people, they have their special algorithms where they will um, help get the people, they'll help kind of with the before and the after. Now, one thing they don't really do, and I kind of knew this at the beginning, but I didn't really know to what extent, is once guests are there, they're not really involved. So... You know, it depends on, I think when, when you're getting into this business, guys, you got to ask yourself, what do I like to do? What do I like to do? What do I have time for? And what don't I have time for? Okay. Because for some people, you know, dealing with guests calling you at, you know, seven o'clock on a Friday night while you're in the middle of, you know, doing your own thing is going to drive you nuts. For other people, say, yeah, not a big deal. Right. Um, but so that with, with a company like Evolve, for example, they're great at getting bookings. And I don't have to worry about that. I'm not doing a lot of back and forth chatter with the guests ans uh, answering questions. But once they're in the door, they're during their stay, they don't really do much. They're slow to respond. And so my team, you know, not me personally, usually my team is still handling that. So I have a, I have a full-time virtual assistant that handles most of this for me. He is a rock star. And so he is on all the platforms and he's chatting with everyone. It, I'll get to I'll get to some more, but we use some really cool systems as well to okay, automate. Okay, so then you use Airbnb or VRBO or Evolve, or those are kind of the big three booking services, aren't they? Booking.com as well. Yep, uh, TripAdvisor. So if you use a company like Evolve, for example, um, they will you know push it out to all of those platforms, and then everything is synced. Okay, so one thing I learned. When I got my second property, because that's kind of a unique thing. Our second property we have is right next door to the first one I bought. And so it's a three bed, three bath townhome. The one next to it, the three bed, three bath townhome. Together, it sleeps 20 people. So I looked at the market. I went online and said, hey, how many places can sleep 14, 16, 18, 20 people? Like nobody. 
right? So you go look at how many people sleep four or six or eight, and it's a ton. And then how many sleep 10, it goes down. How many sleep 12, right? And I was like one of the only ones. So it was really cool. But that's when I learned when your calendars, they got to be synced. And sometimes things just stop working and you got to make sure it's always synced. So that's another nice thing with using something like Evolve. They will make sure everything's all synced with your calendars and you're not getting double booking and stuff like that. But if you have more than one and you're doing it yourself, you got to make sure that everything is synced properly with your calendars and that you know you don't have any double bookings. You're really paying attention to the calendar. I love that idea. This, you know, we've been in real estate, both of us were all about being creative, and that's creative. You figured out where the niche was, and there's lots of times families want to travel together, but maybe not stay in the Airbnb together. They want to stay in the one right next door. Then everybody could run back and forth. That's what you bought then was the capacity for the smaller and the bigger all together. That's yeah. Cool. yeah thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's, it was, I was actually showing properties as an agent because I'm a licensed agent as well. And I was showing properties to a friend of mine who wanted to invest up there. And we were looking at a few different ones and um, I didn't know that was available. Um, but the person we we're working with up there, she's like, Hey, this one's also available. I said, wait a minute. I said, I, I got to do that one, man, because it's my neighbor. I got to get that. And so, yeah, so now it's great. So we have families like, Hey, all the parents are over here and the kids are in this one or vice versa. Or here's this couple, here's this couple, you know, they like to stay up super late. These guys are up early. So yeah, it's really cool. And um, there's really like barely any competition for something that sleeps that many people. And, and it's unique and it's fun. And then we get those groups that keep coming back, keep coming back because it accommodates them. You know, the short-term rental I owned was in um, Edisto, South Carolina. That's an hour south of Charleston. And it was a brand new on the ocean with an elevator home, a couple million dollar home. And we slept 21 and I had to furnish that thing to make that work you know actually we did it very inexpensively it was amazing you just got to be creative wow. yeah absolutely yeah well you bring up a good point um with furnishing so almost every one of my properties i have bought i should say actually all of them i bought fully furnished so most of it was included in the sales price the one i bought in florida we have one in cape coral um that one the the owner sold us all of the furniture i mean really nice stuff like 15 grand uh, no way I would have got the same stuff for 15 grand. So that's another part that people don't always think about is the furnishing. Where you're getting it from? Are you getting like, you know, commercial type furniture, stuff that's going to you know, take a beating? Who's your guest? Who's your clients, right? I mean, if you have a, a two bed, you know, one bath in, you know, the middle of the city somewhere in an urban area, that's a far different thing than a five bed, four bath, you know, in a rural area where you're going to get maybe a, a three families or four families or something like that. You know, but it definitely is something that you got to think about that as well um, and put that into your budget. And, you know, and you're always, you're always replacing stuff too, right? I think because it's just, it needs to beat up or it's just not as nice. The furnishing is a big deal because people, this is real estate, everybody, they go by the pictures and the pictures are, you know, of the furniture and the decor and the feel and the vibe. All of that has to be shown in the pictures because that's why they're going to choose yours. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, well, I, was, it, I was just going to say, so go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I want to know is being a super host important? It is. It is. So, the nice thing with being a super host, I mean, the, the obvious part of it is you know that uh, you do a great job. People can see it. You know, it's like an A rating with a better business program. They know that they, you know, you get that, that trust, that, um, you know, sense of, hey, this is someone good to work with. But the other nice thing with that is, is it pushes you up higher. So, you're seen first, usually, and ahead of other people who are not a super host. So, that's the other nice thing. And, and you got to think, too, right? There's all these different factors that can come down to it. And, and for me, like, I kind of dork out on this stuff, right? Like that's the stuff that keeps me up at night um, when I can't sleep. I'm like, huh, should we change the angles of our first picture? Should we change the, the slogan, right? Do we name it a cute little name like North Shore Hideaway? Or do we do this or that? Like what's working, right? It's that kind of stuff, you know, I kind of geek out on it. But when someone's seeing, you know, a five bed and a five bed and it's, you know, 250 night or, you know, 260 night, the pictures, the furniture, the lighting, the name, but then, yeah, you're, I mean, you're, you're ranking and being a super host, that's going to be absolutely like, oh, we're going right here. So if you can get that, it's awesome. And you, 
here's the thing that I've learned too, right? With, with rankings and, and ratings, it's so freaking crucial. Like, it's not like, you know, when we went to school and you got a, a B and I was like, yeah, a B is still pretty good. Like people expect like all stars, like all five, right? Like if you're a 4.1, it's like, eh, they're four one. This guy's a four eight, four nine, four seven. This is a, you know, you know, not many people are five five all the time. As you get more people, right, it's gonna change. And uh, some people just like to complain. They do. Sorry, they're not like us. They're not abundant, you know, the abundance mindset. They're not always looking on the bright side of life. Some people just kind of complain about stuff. And you gotta do your best to service it right away and do everything you can. But there's been times, you know, I've refunded someone money uh, to keep a, a, a five star because you know we had no hot water which is something that had to do with the area and i had nothing to do with it but you got to appease the people and, and keep them happy you know so i want to know how and i know the other people on here want to know how tell us how to grow a short-term rental portfolio where do we start love it so i think one of the first things that you need to figure out um is how are you going to acquire them? Which I know it sounds really simple, but but I mean, that's kind of, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day, he's looking at getting one of the first properties. This guy's a rock star. He's just out of high school. He's got like two businesses, photography, videography, does podcast stuff. And he's like, how do I get my first house? Well, it's, it's kind of the same thing with short-term rentals, right? You have to figure out what do I bring to the table? What do I have? So you either need to get financing or you can try to go without financing, get things creatively the way I like to do. Um, which is dealing directly with sellers. You don't talk to the bank. So, but you have to find the right sellers in the right situation. Now, not everyone's willing to sell that way. Okay. But um, if you can go do like a lease option or lease with option to buy or, you know, contract to deed on a property, that's a way where you can get in. And I love that strategy. And I've been doing that for the last 10 years. That's what I teach a lot of uh, folks in, in my coaching program as well is how to do that because now you get to call all the shots. You get to call the terms, right? So um, you get, might get someone that says, hey, you know what? I don't care about the fact you can't get financing. And, and, and just so you know, like, I can get financing right now. No problem. Now, years ago, I couldn't, right? I went through some rough times during the mortgage crash and wasn't looking so great on paper after that. You know, I'll be, be, be honest with you. I don't have to say it, but it's the truth. Uh, so there's some times like, I need this stuff. I need to know how to do things outside the box. Right now, I just like to. It's just better. So I closed on a property about three or four weeks ago. Now. I literally put zero down. I bought it for zero. Um, I came into the closing. I think I paid seven hundred dollars or so, and you know, and closing costs with the title company, title insurance, and recording fees. That's it. So, so people say, "Well, how do that? How you know, like, how it was seller finance then, or contract for what? What? Yeah, what? contract, contract for deed. So I technically don't have the deed yet. I have a contract for the deed, and the terms of doing like a contract for deed is uh, basically our seller financing is you know, similar, but a little bit different depending on exactly how you structure, okay? But um, number one, here's the first thing, guys, you just gotta ask. So many people are like, well, how do, you, how do you do this? Like, no one's gonna advertise it. You have to ask. And, you know, like anything, you don't just ask five people and five people. So you gotta ask, you gotta expect, you're probably gonna hear a no, but you gotta know you got to know what's in it for the seller. Okay. So I always say to, to, to my clients and stuff and, and my students, when we're talking about negotiating, I always want to say, what's in it for you? What's in it for me? What's in it for us? Okay. It's very important because then everyone knows, Hey, we're all in the same, we're all in the same playing field here. We all want something. Let's just, you know, call it out. But what makes it a win for everybody? So for this particular seller, this was a little easier one than this one I just did a few weeks ago because I already bought one from him on seller financing. And I know he owns three. And I know he's an older gentleman that doesn't need the money. So these are the things you know, right? So when you're trying to like, think like a detective, you want to build your case, right? So my case is he's got three. It's not like he's hurting to get rid of it. Um, he, he's older and that doesn't necessarily mean anything all the time. I know I'm stereotyping, but he's in a good financial position, okay? So for him, it's not about, I need the money. Like I got to go pay for my kid's college or I'm in debt and I got to pay things off. He's good. So for him, why, why does he want to do that? What's in it for him? Well, if I just paid it off, you know, I, I went to the bank, I got a bank loan and I just bought it and he got all this cash, what's he going to do with it? Well, hopefully put it somewhere else that makes money, right? But is he going to put it in the bank and make 1%, half a percent, 2%, right? Is he going to go buy more? Well, he doesn't really want to go buy more real estate. He also doesn't want to make 1%. The guy's, you know, astute. 
So if he can make five or 6%, which is way better than he's going to make in the bank, which is going to be, you know, maybe as good as you do in the market, but you don't have the stock market roller coaster and you can get that every month. And um, if, 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 if it doesn't work out, right? Like if I stop paying him and he has to basically cancel the, the deal, kind of you know, foreclose on me, so to speak, he gets the property back and he gets all the money back. So I take the bad thing for me and I explain how it's a good thing for him. And now most of the time, again, usually the, the seller would say, great, well, give me some money, right? Give me some money. But what I did is I said, hey, you know, so, so, so seller, Mr. Seller, you and I know you haven't fixed this place up in like 30 years. It's, it's not in bad shape, but it needs some updating. Um, and actually, Leanne, you'll see it. You'll see it this weekend, won't you? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so you'll see it this weekend when you're up at the event, which you can get to that in a little bit. Um, so it needs updating. So I said, look, and, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to pat myself on the back a little bit. I wouldn't have got this, guys, if this was my first you know, couple of years of doing this. But I've learned now, again, to look at every angle of what could happen. So I said, here's the deal. I would rather put the money I could give you, right? Because I have it. It's not like I'm broke with no money. I'd rather put the money I could give you into the property immediately so I can raise, you know, raise the rates, get more occupancy, get more people in, which is good for me. And that's good for you. If you have to take it back, which you won't, because I'll pay you on time every month, no matter what, you got nothing to worry about. And again, I could go to the bank today if I wanted to. I just don't want to. So, but if you took it back, you're going to have a, a place in nicer shape than you have right now. So he's like, huh, okay, that makes sense. And he doesn't have to pay taxes on all that money right now because it's spread out over time. That is a key one. A lot of people, you know, taxes are high and depending on where they are in their life, installment payments, which is what this is, saves them money on taxes. So it, it sat, you created a win-win situation. You solved his problem. He was not rent, not doing it. He didn't want to manage it anymore. You solved that and you're going to fix it. So it's, it's a win-win. That's great. And I'm taking it. This is up at Lutzen, right? Correct. Yep. Up at Lutzen. Lutzen, Minnesota is what we're talking about folks. And um, why don't you just tell them what's, What's going on is kind of exciting this week, this very weekend. What's going on, Jesse? Well, so I'm pretty pumped. And this is really, really funny timing. So I'm sitting here at the Westin uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona. I just wrapped up a four-day kind of men's mastermind where I'm at right now. Okay. And the reason I'm here is because like we am, we both know that the more we've invested in ourselves, in our business, in our network, and meeting other cool people that are like-minded and have big goals or maybe already doing big things and they can share that stuff with you. Um, that is so crucial and that is so important. And I know for me in my career, um, you know, I've, 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 until the last few years, I've, I've never crushed it, but I've never been on the bottom of things, right? I've always been good, right? Or, or, you know, good, good spot. And, uh, but really for me, what's allowed me to have more freedom, more, more, more income, more of this lifestyle that I choose is been investing. Some money into um, investing and traveling and meeting other people. But um, I, the group of people I was with this weekend was amazing. So I'm putting on my own events to show people how to get started with short term rentals, how to get into the short term rental business um, and have your own cash flow cabins, how to do it the way I did, you know, what I just told you now, um, all the different properties that I have, um, how I got each one. They're all kind of different, which is actually pretty cool. And there's all these different ways to get started and get into it, how I manage it, how I'm scaling how I have a team helping me with everything. And it's going to be half classroom style overlooking Lake Superior in a beautiful area. But then the other half is going to be just fun, right? So we're going to be out golfing. We're going to be on the Alpine slide flying down the hill. We're going to be taking a gondola over all the beautiful leaves and trees. We're going to be doing some hiking and, you know, having some wine and having some beer and, 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 and networking with other people that are there too. So one of the things that's awesome is, is for all the folks around here right now, um, and, and you don't have to put it in, in the chat unless you want to. If you want to, drop it in. But what I'd say is know what you need, okay? So know what you need because I have lots of people I know, they have money, they have capital. If they don't have the time, they don't know what to do first. Like I have no idea what to get started. Like I could go to the bank probably or I've got money for down payment, right? I, I didn't have cash. 
but I don't know what to do. And I don't have the time. I'm really, really busy with my, my job. I have a demanding job, right? Or I have a demanding business. Some other folks are maybe on the opposite side of that, right? And we've all been in different places at different times. So you might say, hey, you know what? I just don't really quite have all the money I need to go you know, buy a place right now. Or maybe I can't get financing for whatever reason. Maybe you have a new job or a new business, or you just took a little, you had a little bump in the road with your credit because of medical stuff or a divorce or, um, you know, we work with a lot of those uh, folks, uh, people in situations like that with my rent to own and contract for the program. So, so if you're in that camp, maybe you've got the time, you've got the hustle, you've got the energy. You're like, ah, I can, I can do all the stuff. I just need some capital. I need someone who has good credit or can go get financing. But here's the cool thing. That's another way that I've acquired other properties, right? As I said, what can I bring to the table? What does someone else have? And so one of my great uh, friends now and, and, and clients I've been working with for a few years, I've helped them buy six or seven, well, seven or eight properties now, investment properties. They said, hey, Jesse, we want to get our, our own you know, uh, short-term rental, but we just don't want to deal with it, man. Like we just, we don't want any calls. We don't want to deal with it. And so they said, you know, here's what basically, I mean, they almost kind of threw it out there, right? I kind of had to throw some ideas out there, but they said, what if we go buy it? Uh, we get the financing and, you know, you just manage it and we'll just do 50, 50. And I said, okay, that sounds good. You know? So I, I, I got that zero down and frankly, I actually got paid a commission. So I got paid to go get a property that I get 50% on now. And then I just set up management and I, I, I have my virtual assistant who's in it. I've got, um, you know, we have a, a kind of a system for finding cleaners and for finding maintenance people. We got that rolling. And uh, now a nice little checklist on every new property we get. So that was a way that I got one with, you know, I, I got paid to get a property. Okay. Lots of different I, ways. I, th that is cool. And that is what I call creative financing. And for people like Jesse and I, who've been in the business a long time, we understand how that works, okay? And so we can easily find those deals and work with you on that. So I, I have questions. I want to know, you know, how much cash flow do you get? Like, just for example, like, what can we expect on an average $250,000 short-term rental? Like, what are we going to make a month? Any, is there any average? So again, this is kind of a million dollar question and it depends on your market, it depends on yeah. how you're managing it. Okay. So again, when you're, when you're thinking about what you want to do, right. You want to think about where do I want to be? And again, like if, is this a place that you, if you're just looking from the investment aspect and you could care less about Topeka, Kansas, but Topeka, Kansas is making you money. Okay. That's what you're thinking about. But maybe you're like, I really love Florida. And maybe I'm not making as much money there, but I want to go there. I want to take my family there. I want to take my friends there. I want to go there on vacation. So, so I think that's really important. Is what's your goals with it? Where do you want to be? Then why do you want it? Then you think about the time involved in the management, right? Some people are just fine not making as much money and having a local management team, which is maybe 10 to 30%. Maybe it's more of a resort style area where they're charging like 50%, which I think is crazy. But again, I've got people like Bessie. I don't care. I just want it covering itself, okay? So I think you do that. So those are all the kind of the big things that can change. In, um, or again, uh, you're using a team, which I show people how to kind of find a team, train a team, get them started and utilize them. We're getting around probably 50 to 60,000 a year gross income on a couple of our places that we have for 200 grand. Now, this is definitely higher than the average. Because yes, it's it in is. a resort area. Okay? Yeah. So it has to have a good draw. So we're kind of benefiting from the fact that it's in an area uh, that has a pool, it has a spa, it has a bar and a restaurant, you know, and it's by ski resort. Okay. Um, now it's not a veil, it's not a Breckenridge, it's nothing like that. So that kind of stuff, um, those are kind of the, the little gems, guys, is you find the areas that are not, that are not the top ones that everybody knows that because those are expensive in a lot of those places, you know, um, they're getting so many now, it gets kind of tough on the regulations too. So you really got to watch out for that. But one of our bigger units, um, and you'll see that as well. Um, that's a five bed, four bath, and we have grossed one hundred and five thousand dollars this year. Now. But then, so, when okay, if we that's your gross, but now you got all those darn expenses of cleaners and turnovers, and you know, so what does it all come down to at the bottom? So our nut on that is about thirty six hundred a month, taxes, insurance, HOA dues, which are hefty, um, 
And then, you know, cleaners are for the most part a pass through, right? What we collect is what we pay our, our cleaners. Oh, yeah. Uh, certain properties were making money, certain properties were losing a little bit, um, but it's mainly a pass through. And, um, and then, you know, it, again, again, depends on the property you get and how much do you need to put into it? Because you might get something cheaper at a better price. Like this one I just closed on a few weeks ago. I got that for, um, I got that one for 140000 okay? The other units that I have right now, I paid between 165 and 185 And that was a couple of years ago, like a year, year and a half ago. I could easily sell those for two to 250 right now, especially based on the income, easily, okay? Um, so and I got this for 140 but it needs work. So the point I heard, though, was like, if you just spent the same amount of money, 200 will use, and we're renting it out as a normal, regular rental, you're not going to make $3,600 a month. Just a regular rental property? Yeah. No, 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 right. no not at all. You're going to be <laughs> pumped with making like 400 300, right. 400, 500. Three to four hundred dollars yeah. is what you're going to make. So, you know, but there's a lot. You know, this takes a team, as you said, and there's a lot more moving parts. Let's call it that, because you get people going in and out. So, okay, I I want to ask about the uh, financing because I heard somebody said that you know banks aren't real. They don't like short term rentals. Is that is that true? So yeah, a lot of a lot of the financing institutions right now they don't they don't love it. And if you want to say I'm basing it on this, they may just say no and they don't like it. So here's one thing to think about though is you do want to think of what if things really change with the short term rental market? What if all of a sudden this county or city or area says nope, no more short term rental, which is a scary scary thought, right? What's your backup plan? Well, okay, if you can't short-term rent it, now you maybe have to do like, you know, 30-day minimums. Do you have an area that would that will allow for that, right? Um, so the banks kind of the banks kind of know this. I think they want to still feel things out and see how things go for a while. So if you find a place, and again, this is a good thing and a bad thing, right? So I agree. I, I would love to see more banks that start using short-term rental um, numbers. And there's a few out there. There are a few out there. They're not necessarily conventional. And they're one way might have a little bit higher rate, maybe a little bit higher down payment, but they will base it on that. Okay, so it's out there. You just got to look a little bit or have the right no resources. But um, but look at it if it is if it's something you had to flip flop to a long term, would it still make money? Now maybe it's not going to be making you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year in income, right? Maybe it's making half that, but is it still profitable, right? Because you want to still have a profitable plan B and a profitable plan C if you can. See, I like this strategy. Jesse talks about that, the ABC strategy. A, you buy it for the short-term rental, but what if like actually COVID hit and it actually helped short-term rentals, you know, versus it hurt them for a while and then it helped them. So it, it's a good thing to do. And people are real familiar with it now, maybe more than they used to be. But the B plan Okay, you get a regular tenant in there, you got your mortgage covered, you're good there too. Should the market shift? What's the C plan? C plan. So I got a C and a D. Okay. So the C plan is okay, let's say the short term rental market goes to crap. Let's say the long term rental is just not very good or not finding a very good tenant. Okay. My plan C before selling it, because you don't really want to sell the asset unless it's going to make money. If you can make some money, then put that into more assets. Okay, fantastic. All right. You did all this work to get a place. You want to keep it if you can. So my plan C would be who in that area um, just can't get financing right now and might be interested in a contract for the or lease option themselves. Okay. That's a whole nother pool of people that are willing to pay a little bit more per month and frankly willing to put some money down up front that I can use um, for whatever I need to use it for. So that's always an option that I like yeah, with any property I have because that market's out there and we like to help that market. Plan D would be just selling the darn thing. But between A, B, C, and D, you should hopefully have some options with A, B, and C. You shouldn't have to go to the point of just selling it. And here's the thing, right? I think you and I were talking about this, but as the markets shift and change, if the market's really bad in the sense that values go down and we see kind of this, this rocket ship, you know, start plateauing and even going down, that's going to affect the economy, right? So if that affects the economy, 
there's going to be people that are going to get, unfortunately, negatively affected by that. Those kind of people are going to have less options. So we're in a solutions business, whether you like it or not, right? We're in a marketing business and we're in a solutions business. So if we can provide a solution to those folks, um, that's a nice little option for them. So I think it's, I don't want to say recession proof, uh, those words exactly, but I think if you know who can benefit from what you have on any side of what's happening, I think you're in a good spot versus just, well, if I can't, you know, if it doesn't go up in value, I can't sell it. Well, you got to have, have a few different backup plans. This is a great point because I meet so many people just even um, as a realtor that just didn't think, should I, should I sell it or should I rent it? Like, it's just taking a look at the ABC. Okay, I own this piece of property. I, I don't want it anymore for whatever reason. What's the best way to exit? You have to look at that because there could be a lot of money you leave on the table if you don't know a realtor who knows options. Um, it makes a difference. We have a question here. How do we find a great area? Like how, where do we go to get these numbers that we can find these little pockets? Like you say, the resort, the whatever. How, is there a place to look? There is. Um, so there's a few different sites out there. One that I like to use a lot, and, and many of you might be familiar with it, but it's airdna.co, I believe, actually. So airdna.co. Um, great site is probably one of the biggest ones out there right now that has data on how to go in. And it's pretty crazy. It's got like every single property linked in there and it knows the rates and uh, percentages. Now, here's the thing that's a little tough. Number one, they are really right. That is, that is the new goal. So they're trying to really make some money. So if you want to look at all these different areas all over the country, you got to pay a good chunk to get in to see different things. Okay. So that's kind of something to know. The other thing is like, I was, our, our, our property in uh, Florida, for example, in Cape Coral, Florida, I was looking at the average. I was looking at kind of best case, worst case. Best case to the average is a big difference, okay? So you look at the average, I'm like, you know, this is ironically, a, a, I mean, a nicer house. The house we have is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's on, it has a pool, it has a spa, it's on a canal, you're 15 minutes out to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, just looking at it, it looks nicer than the other ones that I've got. Yet that makes a half, that makes half the money, if not a third of the money. Okay. Um, but it still makes more than the average RDNA said it would. Okay. So you got to look at this and, you know, it, it's a little bit of a guesstimate. You're not going to necessarily know. So I would look and say, what's my worst case numbers? And then what's the best case? And what are these people doing? So I can try to get it up there. Okay. Uh, but RDNA is a, a big one. You also look at like uh, rentometer.com or rentometer. Sometimes people say it that way. That's not short-term rentals, but again, that's your plan, your plan B, that's your long-term rent, right? So if something would rent on rentometer, rentometer.com, or even Zillow, again, Zillow, don't shoot me. It's not always the most accurate, but like the rent estimate, it's in the ballpark. And it's, again, it's, it's a number to look at. So if you look at like Zillow, you look at rentometer, this is kind of your plan B, your long-term rent, and then your short-term is going to be higher than that. Um, well, and I would think, obviously, if you're thinking of buying in an area, go look at what is for rent in that area and then start to compare. And that's how you figured out that niche that, wait a minute, there's nothing that can hold these 20 people, you know, like that would be, that's a great combo of side-by-siders because they're not dependent on each other, but they can go together well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I say you, you, you beat me to the punch. So Go on to Airbnb, go on to Verbo.com, go look at these things and see what people are charging, see what the availability is too. So sometimes you might, you know, you might look and go, holy cow, everything is full right now. Um, so if it's all full right now at an average of 250 a night for a 3-2 in this market and it's full, that means there's capacity for more or there's capacity to, to raise your rates. Okay. If you look and you see there's a whole bunch of vacancies, well, that might be a problem. And look in the areas, look in the, you know, in, in the, um, the different communities. That's a big part too. So um, I see someone here putting um, uh, lead up, all, all the rooms.com. Heard of that as well. Yep. That's one. Um, there is um, that's another one I'm thinking of. There's a few different sites out there that I kind of toggle back and forth between. But, but that's, that's a big part, right? Air DNA and then just actually going and doing the math there. Here's the other thing, guys. Join some groups on like Facebook and LinkedIn and bigger pockets and, and you'll know, work with other people that are doing it. So the nice thing is, you know, most people are pretty sharing. Anyway, I'm happy to tell you all my numbers on my places, right? 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared to, to share that stuff. Some people get a little close to the best. They'd be like, I don't want to tell you this because I want you coming and getting stuff in my area. But most people are pretty sharing and giving with that. And they'll say, yeah, you know what? Um, these times of the year are not good. These times are hot. This is what we did. This is what we're doing. And you'll get some different information that way. So there's a long question in here. Um, I, I really want to touch on what he said about resorts. I worked with a client and he was out of, uh, he had short-term rentals in Branson, Missouri. Okay. And that's the resort thought, you know, that's that same thing. And they were cheap condos. He bought for about a hundred thousand because he was buying another one when I was working with him. And Exactly. Because the touristiness of the area is what brings the people and they got to stay somewhere when they're going to go to all those shows and do all those things. So the resort thing is really hot. Um, now, somebody's asking about what about coastal areas? We all know real estate's expensive. You start getting near the water. Ouch. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and, and you know what? I think there's a couple up here, too. I want to make sure we don't, we don't miss any. Um, uh, Lynn was asking before. Let, do you mind, Lynn, if we come back to that? Yeah, come back. Is that okay? Okay. Because um, Lynn was asking about seller financing versus contract for need. Which one do you like better? Um, seller financing, I like to do seller financing on that when it's free and clear. Okay? Um, sometimes people can wrap their head around that easier. Sometimes it's tougher. Contract for deed is nice as well, though. With that, you know, you just, you're putting the money down. If you're putting anything down, you negotiate your term, how long you want to do that for. And, um, and you make sure you have everything kind of set up for the future with it. So uh, I'm fine with either one, but if, if there's already existing financing in it, then you're probably going to want to do, um, you know, contract for deed. But you might want to know what, if there's, what the bank is, right? You're going to want to know if that's a bank that's okay with it or not. And I would maybe do a shorter term. But if you can get an actual true seller financing on it, and you get a note and do that uh, part, then um, I like that, okay? So it, it kind of depends on, on the scenario, obviously. Well, you read the next question. I got a comment on that, working on a yeah. contract for deed for somebody right now. And a lot of people don't understand that financing, but here's what my suggestion is. Make sure you have a good title company because guess what? We caught some things as you can, <laughs> you know, like it's just make sure you understand your paperwork. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and just, you know, I'm, I'm muting it whenever I'm not talking because there's this beautiful fountain back here. Um, and it's just a little, yeah, this little background noise. So I'm just going to mute that. Um, as far as the coastal areas, so, um, so Fran's saying running into restrictions um, on the West Coast. So yeah, that's definitely something I'm hearing from other uh, friends and investors. And you, you got to look at the market, right? So you got to look at, you know, what kind of state are you in? What's the, the, what's the politics look like in those areas? I'm not making this a political thing, but you got to see what kind of people are getting into. And, you know, there's certain areas that are going to be more friendly for short-term rentals and others that are not. Um, and some places are just getting crazy on, on the pricing. Now, I wouldn't, in my opinion, I wouldn't tell somebody to go, you know, just jump into like a million dollar plus short-term rental on the hopes that you're going to get that because again you're playing b and c and d right those are some bigger things to deal with i would say get into something that is um not such such a big swing right off the bat you know what i mean and look at the areas that that's actually one thing that rdna need, need does for example is they talk about like the risk factor and they talk about um the score that they have based on like local uh, rules and regulations and restrictions but Go to the local newspapers and like a lot of the newspapers are online and, you know, kind of dig through that stuff. Look at the articles. But again, in the area of social media, like you should be able to find someone that has something there and talk to them about that and what's going on. Right. You can, you can That's find key. that. That mm -hmm. is really key because um, I had a student in my program and he wanted to purchase some short-term rentals and he picked an out-of-state market in Tennessee and he went down there in one five-day binge, and he, I swear, he met so many people that have them and found out about that market. And that's about having your team. You got to have the right realtors, the right cleaners, the right all the things. And 
he went on a mission like a detective, just like you said, you better go down there and you better go stay in one. And then you better find out everything and use your time wisely before you invest, because you've got to know some of those things. And Absolutely. Now, Lita is asking here, do we need a rental license or a vacation rental? You have to know those local ordinances and even into the future. What are they proposing? Because guess what? It might be cool now, but here's a great one. You know, the city of Minneapolis, they have a new ordinance coming. I don't know if it, it started already, didn't it? I, I know one guy was trying to renew his 12 rental licenses. And guess what? One owner can only have one. And you can't hide it in an LLC or this or no, he had to, he had to go to plan B, which he originally was B and went to A. Now he went back to B on a lot of his properties in the uptown area. It, it can happen. So you better watch the regulations of your city or area, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and really, I mean, guys, you should be checking on that before you do anything else, right? Because the last thing you want to do that's first. is get super excited about something and be like, all right, here's how we're going to do the money, or we, we can get the financing, or we're going to just start hitting up sellers for selling financing, or I'm going to go get a partner, right? And then you go there and you go look at places, uh, you know, you're checking out like here in, in, in Scottsdale and Phoenix, checking out the areas, and then you find out, wait a minute, there's, there's you know, there's some issues, there's some, uh, they, they either don't allow it, or they're talking about changing it or, you know, or whatever it might be. So yeah, so our places that we have, we have to get a license through the county. And then we also have to go through the uh, Minnesota Department of Health, actually. Uh, so we have to have a couple different things. And then a third unique twist to that is because we're part of a resort, even though the resort doesn't own us, but it manages a lot of the things and the shared amenities and pool and spa and, you know, stuff like that. Um, we have to get like guest information from everybody and give that for security purposes to make sure they know who's like in the resort area at all times. So, um, and, and, and I'll say, and I'll definitely be getting into this this weekend because we're going to be at my, at my properties um, at this resort, but associations, okay, this is, this is key. I would try not to buy anything in an association if you can help it, but know this, it can change a lot easier in an association than it's going to in the state or in the county. The association is going to say, we don't like this anymore, and it can change a lot quicker. And so where I've got um, a bunch of my properties is there's technically three associations, and there was a very hard push for the last couple of years, and I was fighting it, um, but two of the three voted where now you have to have management. So you have to use a management company. You cannot just do it on Airbnb and VRBO and whatnot yourself. Okay, so for some people, it's going to be a big difference now. I'm the kind of person when I see a challenge, I say, well, where is the solution? So we're forming a management company. And so that management company is now going to help all those folks who have to use a management company. And we're going to try to have a couple different options for people. So there you go. There's Bye. another, um, <clears throat> let's see. Somebody asked about your Cape Coral deal. Do you, do you find deals from direct mail absentee owners or like it's it's who you know, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of it is. A lot of it is. I, I you know, I'd love to say it's something really cool and, and ninja like where it was, you know, direct mail and absentee is both for part of it. To be honest with you, it was on the MLS. I, I just got that one on the MLS because here's the thing. I knew what I wanted and I knew um, it had to be the right fit. So, again, you know, this is an area where. If it has all the things that I want it to have in the right condition, um, right layout, right part of town, right, and, and being on the water and whatnot, I knew that if I got it at the right price, based on the numbers, it's still going to make sense. It's still going to make money. It's still going to make sense. And um, so we have, you know, um, an investor uh, slash agent help with that, with that deal. So, but most of the other ones I got were, uh, almost all were off market. So... Those were just, you know, going directly to the seller, uh, so, you know, scraping a list or just talking with other owners. That's a cool thing. So if you get into an area, you know, we can start getting resources in those areas, whether it's just in another city or if it's maybe part of a resort, you can start finding out who might be selling. So again, you got to think a, of their, their problems. What are their problems they have and how can we solve it by coming in and helping them out? 
I have a question about Lutzen. Um, it's this weekend, as we said. Are do you have any slots open, or did you are you full? I have. Well, I've got one slot open, but technically two because one of the people is uh, they're staying in their own unit, <laughs> so they own a unit up there. So I've got room for two people right now. Um, if anyone is interested in attending, so I know I'm it's putting sure it in the chat box here. So you guys who are here on the call, not the replay people, have a chance at the last second. It's right there, the jessemills.com, Luton, just in case anybody wants to go to the mastermind. Um, one other thing I want to talk about here, we're just wrapping up, is what do you see, Jesse, since you, you own some, you, you, you have some in other states, you know, what do you think is the future of short-term rentals? Or, you know, this new surge, we've got all these people staying there. It's kind of, it's more, uh, it has more amenities than in a hotel and you can cook your own meals and all those things. People are liking it. Is it going to stay? I, I think it has, I think with uh, with COVID and with everything that's going on, it has fundamentally changed travel. I mean, you can see some of the bigger hotel chains even and, and you know, global corporations, they're even getting into some of their own where it's their, you know, home collection and whatnot. So they realize that people say, hey, you know what? Instead of staying, you know, in, in, a, in a room with two beds for just us, are you on a family trip and you're spending, you know, 200, 250, 300 a night um, times two or three or four, if you can be to a place where you can cook and you can maybe save some money that way and you can have, you know, your friends and family in one place. Like one of our places, we charge between six fifty dollars and probably eight fifty dollars a night. I think we'll be at $900 a night during the holidays um, and, and peak season. But it sleeps 14 people. So, and it has, you know, you can cook there. And, and what I love too is if you want to go to the restaurant, go to the restaurant. Like, like for me, when I go up there, I never cook, like ever, unless I'm there for, you know, maybe a week or so with my family and then we're cooking. But otherwise, there's a restaurant, I'm going to the restaurant. My property and the ones next door are paying for my meal. So I'm cool with that. They're paying for my cleaner to come in. I don't clean my own place. Like, <laughs> really, are you that lazy? Yes, I am that lazy. Time is money, right? And I value that more. And I don't want to clean my place. So I just pay them the cleaning fee. But really, I'm not paying for it. It's getting covered by you know the rental revenue. So um, I think it's going to be here to stay. Now, I think different pockets you have to look up again there's, there's certain areas and states like florida makes so much money now in short-term rentals and getting taxes and it's an area that is not changing like that's gonna be very tough but you also look at the you know local politics and government and stuff like that um but there's all these little pockets that are shifting so again i think it's i think it's important that you look at it and say okay if all of a sudden we have to go 30-day rental minimum what does this look like right um, are we making money and how much money are we making still? And if we have to just go to a regular rental, if we have to, you know, do something creative, sell it on a lease option or contract or deed or owner financing, can we still make money that way? Um, and not just bank on it's always going to be there. That's the one thing that's a little tricky with it, right? Is uh, is knowing that things can kind of pivot uh, when, and some of it's outside your control. It's all about knowing that we're having access to someone who understands the A, B, C, D there's a lot of options with real estate if you get this whole game of monopoly, as I call it. So um, somebody said, oh, hi, Steve is on here. Uh, do you let Airbnb pick your rates when you're choosing a base? Well, I don't even understand that. Tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, and Steve, no, I did not meet your cousin, Tim, in Arizona. But I had no one before. I, I maybe would, yeah. There's a guy that um, I met in a mastermind a couple of years ago. Uh, it was Steve, Steve Valentine. So Steve is an awesome dude. He's flipped. Oh my god! I know I him too. I know him house. too. You know Steve? Yeah. Everybody knows Steve. Steve's a great dude. Um, so yeah, so he's a great resource and contact out here, and he does a lot of great stuff. It's a good podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's the thing, guys. When you're working with someone about this stuff, you know, and Elena, we've talked about this before, right? But you want to work with someone who's doing it, okay? So you don't, you don't go to your dentist and ask, you know, about your foot problem, right? You go to your, your regular doctor and they refer you to a specialist and you talk to them about your foot problem. So you want to make sure you're dealing with the right person who's doing this, who's active in it, um, you know, who's selling them and they know what to look for and what to look out for. So as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, Airbnb picking rates, no, I don't do that because I know what our rates are. Now, again, here's, here's the thing is. I really pay attention to the pricing in the market of, of my competitors, which 
half of them are friends of mine and clients of mine are my competitors, but um, I kind of know where they're at. And then, you know, there's always usually a season, right? So like, I know, for example, May and November, we're going to barely make money. Like, I hope if we, if we pay our bills those months, that's just how it is. But I know I'm making bank in June, July, and August. I know I'm making bank in January, February, March. Okay. So you've got this, you know, kind of cyclical time throughout the years. And so sometimes the smart pricing that Airbnb does, I don't think it, I think it pegs it. I think you're leaving some money on the table. Um, what, what a lot of um, other friends of mine like to do is price it pretty high far out. And as you get closer and closer, then you drop her down, drop her down, drop her down. Uh, but just some different kind of games you can play. You just, you know, one of my, one of my buddies, and he's actually going to be at the event. He's got a handful of short-term rentals. He does a lot of co-hosting too. So if you guys have any interest in co-hosting and doing that, um, he'll be speaking about that one night during uh, happy hour and orders and whatnot. So I'm pretty excited about that. He's a super host. He's got a lot of really good gold uh, nuggets he'll be dropping. But um, so he'll have like a per room thing, or I mean a, a per person count, right? And so he'll do that and get a little bit more money from people on a bigger unit. So sometimes you can do pet fees. I mean, there's different ways you can monetize things. So, um, but here's the thing is you can always let it, you know, you can, you could try with Airbnb and let them play with it a little bit, but keep an eye on it. I think one of the biggest mistakes people can do is just set the price and never pay attention to it. You got to pay attention to it. So, I mean, if you haven't learned by now, guys, this is definitely more work than a regular rental. Um, and it's way, way more work than like, what I love to do is, you know, help someone uh, buy a home through a rent to own and contract for D and I have a slow flip program. That's nothing. I talk to those people once or twice a year. They just pay, pay, pay. They fix things. They repair things. Um, it's all the benefits of a landlord without all the headaches of being a landlord. I love that. But it's not the same kind of cash flow as a short-term rental. So you're going to have more stuff to deal with. But again, you don't have to be the one dealing with all of it. There are ways you can have systems. Um, one of the things we'll be going into as well at the event is talking about different uh, systems and websites we use for automation that are sending a message instantly um, when they check in and the next day and before checkout. And we've done some creative stuff like the day before checkout, they get a message. Again, this is all automated. We don't have to worry about it anymore. It just shows up in their inbox. But hey, we can't wait to give you a five-star review. Just please follow all the checkout instructions that we have on the checkout list. If you have any questions, let us know. And uh, that way we're reminding them about the checkout instructions. We're telling them we want to give them five stars. So hopefully they want to give us a five-star. Or say, hey, you kind of got to do the stuff in order for us to give you, you know, the five star review or whatnot. So it is those special things that make a difference. You know, I've stayed at a ton of them. I was just at one two weeks ago out by Alexandria. And you know what? Truthfully, it needed, it, you know, it needed a handyman to, and they needed to spend a thousand dollars. I'm telling you. Um, so, okay, we're wrapping up here and I just want to put up, I'm going to put up a slide really quick. This is how you contact Jesse is go look over there on his website, the jessemills.com. And if you want to find him or anything, and then I also want to share with you, um, I offer, let's see if I can get it, a free strategy session. If you want to talk about real estate, proven profit formula, or how we can help you solve an ABCD problem, you can schedule with me. Just go to my website. You'll find a bunch of buttons, book a call. That's how you get to me. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. We didn't quite get all the questions, but I think we did pretty good. Uh, and just know that, um, the truth is you don't need a ton of money or knowledge to get started as a real estate investor. You just need to know the right formulas and how to put it all together. It's kind of like a puzzle to be a smart investor. And thanks so much, Jesse, for sharing a bunch of information about short-term rentals. And what I want to say is, People are excited about this. We had more action about having Jesse as a speaker here than we have lately. It's a big thing, this short-term rental business. And I think it is, I agree with you that it's, it's changed. You know, COVID has changed how we look at short-term rentals. And, you know, my daughter travels a lot and she works traveling and she stays in those ones where you just get the room. Because she's, you know what, she's working. She's not there anyway, but she's there to sleep. And it's just, she can cook there. It's different than a hotel. 
Yeah. So thanks everybody. They're all yeah. writing. Yes, there is a replay for whoever asked, as long as you're a member of the club and you are, because that's how you got on here. Then the replay comes out in about a week, week and a half. So you can get it and really listen. All right. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Good to see you. Thank again. you Leanne, for having me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys. Yeah. And I'll see you this weekend in Lutzen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. You guys.